And we are back once again in Hollywood Smoke in the city of Santa Monica for another edition of 10 Count. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Mr. Michael Montero and Doug Fisher of Ring TV. Gentlemen, there was some fights this past weekend from Tampa, Florida at the Sun Dome, the PBC on ESPN. Keith Thurman stopping Louis Colazzo in seven, an HBO Latino, the swan song for the LA Sports Arena. Mauricio Herrera with a technical decision in five rounds over Hank Lundy. Guys, Keith Thurman, let's go to you first, Mike. Were we too quick to crown him as the savior or the next guy? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he, look, he's, he's a contender. He's a legitimate bona fide contender, but he's still building and still developing, and we saw some of that, yeah. right? He looked tense. He looked a little nervous. I mean, he was fighting in front of hometown fans. There was a major upset on that co-feature, right? So he, he fought a little through a little adversity with the body shot in the fifth round. He responded well. He did enough to win, but he didn't overly impress. But Colazzo is a guy who's tough to look good against, right? So right. Yeah. I thought he did enough, but he's still learning. He's not ready for Mayweather. Let's put that talk to bed. Let's see him in there against a Sean Porter or somebody like that. I think Thurman was in a no-win situation. When you're fighting Louis Colazzo, it's like, how do you look good? How do you to one. Yeah, it's yeah. with those kind of odds, the only way you can really live up to expectations and, and awe everybody is if you score an early knockout. And that's not going to happen with a guy as, as, as experienced and as tough and as savvy as Colazzo is. I don't, I don't like the matchmaking. I thought that Colazzo was really a lateral step from Robert Guerrero. Robert Guerrero, it made sense. He was a gritty guy. He was really the first top 10 welterweight con contender that... Keith had faced, and um, it was a decent fight. He dropped Guerrero. He had to kind of gut out the, the, the final rounds. But all in all, it was a good, gritty fight that had had people buzzing. The Colazzo fight took away that buzz, and that's a problem I have with PBC matchmaking is you see a lot of guys who are young, still growing, um, growing as fighters, but also growing their name recognition within boxing fans and casual fans. And when you got a guy in that situation, you want to put them in the kind of matchups where they're not only going to just win, but they're going to look good and make people want to tune in to see them again. And I think a lot of folks, if that was the first time you saw Keith Thurman fight, you ask yourself, what's all the hype about? Well, Doug, Who cares? Doug, if you're fighting someone that's 80 to 1, you better dominate. But I, I do think this it's is impossible, one of the, though. Colossal. I, I agree, does that? But, but here's the other issue, though. I, I was there ringside, and I think you were there too, Doug, when Jose, not Miguel Cotto, buzzed. Saul Alvarez, Doug Jones, Floyd Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Young prospects, and no matter how. the field against Burt Cooper. Right. Things happen. You get hit, anything can happen. I think people are making too much of the fact that Keith Thurman got hit and hurt by a body shot. Yeah. Mike, last time I checked, this is boxing. Guys is get boxing. hit. It happens. You, you get, get hit, hit and you get hurt. Even Floyd's been hit in some of his early fights. Marcus Carley. Exactly. And he I was, was, he go was there. 27 yeah. or 28 years old, and that was his 32nd prize fight. Keith Thurman is 26, and that was his 26th professional bout. So, I mean, if, if the so-called greatest fighter who ever lived can have right. more than one wobbly moment against Chop Chop Corley when he's closer to 30 than 20, I mean, most fighters should be allowed to have those growing experiences. Yeah, it, it's development. And, and again, this wasn't the best matchmaking for entertainment value. But in terms of development, I don't mind it because... Let's face it, Klaus is probably the first full-grown welterweight yeah. that Thurman has fought because Guerrero started as a featherweight. The one thing I do notice about Thurman sometimes is he gets his elbows out a little, mu yeah. a little bit, so he leaves himself open for those body shots. So look, maybe he learns a lesson from this, he comes back stronger from it. It's not a bad thing, people. And Michael, I, I do think this, and people have said, why does Thurman look more gun-shy? Why is he not as aggressive as he has been in the past? I go back to the night I was in San Antonio. Uh, when an overhand right from Jesus Soto crossed first 30 seconds, and he got buzzed really badly, and, I, and that changes the fighter. We saw that with Edwin Rosario altering the whole career of Hector Camacho. So as strong and as heavy-handed as Thurman is, I also think he knows he can be dented. And speaking of development, Doug, was Tony Harrison, was this a case of going from Gerber's to Steak? Absolutely. Absolutely. That really, uh, yeah, I mean, well... Harrison should have won on paper. It looked like a kind of fight that, yeah, it was a test, but one that he should have passed. It wasn't a, a, a very hard test because, let's face it, Willie Nelson doesn't have a great reputation of, of having a good chin yeah. himself, but obviously he's got a better chin than Tony Harrison. I mean, all, all Willie Nelson really did was fight back a little yeah. bit. 
And yeah, it, and it was the, the first shot on the top of the head. Yeah, it wasn't the, even on the chin. But the way he reacted to it, to me, he didn't deal with that adversity, which tells you he, he hadn't been matched in a way that he ever had to really bite down on his, his mouthpiece and fight through any adversity. Because it's the first adversity that he experienced, getting hit to the temple, getting dropped, getting up, and, and not feeling his legs under him. He didn't know how to handle it. He didn't look at the referee. Exactly. He kind of stumbled corner. forward. Yeah. He went right to a neutral corner turned and put his back. His, turned his back and put his head down. That is that is the universal sign for submission. And when you got I tagged, give up. His, his hands. Oh, goes I can't up. help myself. Right, right. Like if somebody doesn't know how to react when they first get hit, their hands kind of freeze up, their right. arms, and that's what I saw from him. He didn't clinch. He didn't move. He didn't shift. It was just this. So yeah, yeah he was he was hurt. And he's now, used to blowing through guys. Right, that's the bottom line. Right, and he's psychologically, cats. whether it's on the chin, and, and again, I don't say he's a bad chin because he did get hit on the temple, but psychologically, once you get stopped, guess what? Now you may have to go backwards in terms of the matchmaking process and right. the development. For Tony Harrison. Gentlemen, we were all ringside at a very hot, humid LA sports arena. Uh, literally, as they knocked down the building, the air conditioning, I think, has already been taken out by Donald <laughs> Sterling. I have one question. Should partial rounds be scored? Because basically, Henry Lundy, Mike, he lost because of 51 seconds in a truncated round. That seems unfair to me. Yeah, you know, I, I think in that situation, I believe one judge scored that last round 10, even, 10. right? Right. I hate 10 10 rounds. I hate 10 10 scoring, but that's a situation where I could Made I sense can dig with it. it. It was inconclusive. The round right. hadn't finished. Um, we, we did get two minutes of that round. Um, I don't have a huge problem with it, to be quite honest. Now, if it was like 30 seconds in or just one minute into the round, uh, that's not long enough. But two minutes in, I mean, it, to me, and I, and I scored that round for Herrera. It, it looked like to me, really, from the third round on, Herrera had kind of gained his bearings from you know the headbutts and some some hard shots yeah. early from lundy and he was kind of taking over the fight kind of imposing his yeah. will and his style on lundy um but you know i i, I can understand the frustration from lundy um it, it was it was that close i mean it was it was an, one even card 48 48 and one card of like what 48 Two of and 47 49 48 so right so one fight. yeah one point and 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 that is how close it was yeah, but michael don't fact. you think though that as doug just said i thought herrera as soon as he stopped waiting and stopped trying to counter and time him as soon as he initiated the contact i thought that the fight had turned into a herrera fight absolutely and and Lundy let Herrera back into the fight, yeah. right? But also Herrera worked his way back into the fight and he started with the body yeah. and then he started coming up top. So the third round I thought is where Herrera worked his way back. And I think you're right. I think he was dazed from that first headbutt. Oh, he, he looked out of it for yeah. a couple rounds. Didn't look he, like he knew where he was. He was kind of just backing up on the rope saying, come on, come on. You know, he wasn't really throwing much, but Lundy saves face here because it was a close fight yeah. that could have went either way. So he can go back and say, hey, you know, I got robbed, blah, blah, blah. For Herrera, though, you know, after the injuries, he's going to have to heal because that cut on that right eye while, huh? was nasty. Yeah. But he moves on to a bigger, better fight, right? Yeah. And he's earned it. With his body of work over the last couple of years, he's earned that. Yeah, I'm fight. thinking the winner of the proposed uh, uh, Lucas Matisse, Victor Postal fight for the vacant WBC title. Who I think that, that makes sense that Herrera deserves. Yeah. Just given his performance against Danny Garcia, I mean, Absolutely. he should have won it then. So, I mean, I... I that's, that's a fight that can probably happen, particularly if Matisse wins. Yeah, and Matisse, if he wins, he's with Golden Boy, as is Mauricio Herrera. Well, that's yeah. it for this edition of 10 Count. On behalf of Michael Montero and Doug Fisher, this is Steve Kim saying, till the next round, goodbye, everybody.